Well, today I am here to predict the top 10 free Asian signings. Yo, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to Philly's SEO Media, and today we're going to be predicting the uh, top 10 free agent signings of this off season. Hey guys, before I get into this video, please subscribe if you haven't yet. Please don't forget to bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and let's get into this. So, hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving. Right, before we get into the video, hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving with their families, their friends, you know, whatever, right? I mean, hope you all just had a good Thanksgiving. I have so much to be thankful for. Uh, I'm also going to apologize for not getting this video out a little bit earlier. I was feeling a little bit under the weather this past week, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so I apologize for that. My voice was not really feeling 100%. Uh, and I just thought it was, you know, not the best idea to do a video. Uh, so my apologies, but I'm feeling a little bit better now. And I got to get down, back down to business. As we're going to kick off this top 10 free agent prediction video with shortstop Carlos Correa. Had, uh, you know, seven great years. Houston Astros, right? I mean, he was great. He had one rookie of the year in 2015. A World Series champion asterisk in 2017. Uh, and a guy that has just been very, very fiery, right? Has, a lot, has, has shown a lot of emotion, uh, and uh, he has now entered the market. So, uh, Carlos Correa, as I'd say, you know, his top four suitors would be the Tigers, Mets, Yankees, and Phillies. Uh, so, you know, some teams make more sense than others. I do think the Yankees make a lot of sense, right? I mean, they definitely need, uh, you know, another bat on the left side of the infield. Uh, and uh, the Yankees are just like, they're always in on everybody, right? Every big name free agent seems the Yankees are in on uh, after the loss of Javier Baez to the Mets go and, you know, uh, you know contact uh, Carlos Gray, his agent. Uh, you know, uh, of course, he would have to take on a position change, you know, Francisco Lindor at shortstop, or maybe you move Lindor uh, elsewhere, maybe you move him to third. Uh, that's a possibility. Uh, the Phillies, I put the Phillies on. I don't really think they make a lot of sense, right? I mean, they're, they are they are looking at the shortstop class. That's why I did throw the Phillies name in here. Uh, I don't really think the Phillies are going to be that serious. I think Carlos Correa will end up with the Detroit Tigers, right? I think he has a, he has a good connection with A.J. Hinch, the manager of the Tigers. That was his manager. He's with the uh, Houston Astros, right? He got got fired after the 2019 season. After that uh, whole cheating scandal was uncovered. I heard a rant about, uh, you know, A.J. Hinch and Alex Cora did that last November. Uh, but, uh, yeah, definitely not a fan, uh, to say the least. But there is a connection there. The Tigers are a young, up-and-coming team. Uh, that did definitely fall short this past season, but I mean, they have a bright future ahead. I mean, they're going to be very good, right? I mean, they have one of the best farm systems in all baseball. Very, very young team, and I think that uh, to bring in a guy like that who's, who's won, a, you know, has won a World Series, who's, uh, you know, appeared in three World Series, you know, 2017, you know, 2019, and 2021 after they lost to the Nationals and the Braves uh, in that order. Uh, and this guy's done the postseason. Uh, so I definitely think he'd make a lot of sense for Tigers. 10 years, $325 million. Uh, so that is it, right? Just uh, five million short of Bryce Harper's uh, three thirty. He got into two thousand eighteen, two thousand nineteen out season. Number two on the list, right? This isn't really in order, uh, but uh, we have Corey Seager, uh, the uh, Rookie of the Year in 2016 of the Los Angeles Dodgers 2020 World Series champion. So he definitely has a good resume uh, on there. There's no question about that. A very, very good career at the Los Angeles Dodgers. Did deal with some entries. You, know, you go take a look at 2018 a year when they had to go out and trade for Manny Machado from the Orioles for you know half a season rental because of the Tom and John surgery that Corey Seager did have to have. He has battled you know you know a few injuries over the past couple years, uh, but the teams are going to be interested in him are still the Dodgers, right? The Dodgers are still in, I guess you could say, uh, and the Tigers and Mets, right? I already explained the Tigers, right? I mean they could use a shortstop, uh, and I think they really would just need to make a big splash to kind of jumpstart, uh, you know, their new kind of like their new era. Talking about this with Carlos Correa, uh, and I do think that, uh, you know, Corey Seager would make a lot of sense with the Detroit Tigers. He is a lefty, though, of course, right? I mean, uh, Carlos Correa is a righty, but Corey Seager definitely would fit the Tigers. The Mets also, I don't really think the Mets are going to you know, make that move. Uh, the Dodgers, right? I mean, don't run out the Dodgers. Uh, they still can get him back, but I ultimately think he ends up with the New York Yankees. Uh, you know, a lot of the baseball beat writers, you know, predict this, and this is part of, you know, my decision making. You know, predictions are meaningless pretty much, and it's funny because it kind of has a domino effect. Predictions. Like, you know, when one player goes here, then it can impact in where another player is going to go. Let's take, you know, uh, you know, for example, Corey Seager signs with the Tigers, and the Tigers, uh, you know, a team that I predicted Carlos Correa signed with, are now out on him. Uh, so it could change everything. One move, one player signing, one team can change everything. So it's it, it's kind of weird, right? I mean, a lot can change by just one, you know, scenario changing. 
Uh, but the Yankees would definitely need a bat like Corey Seager. He'd rake uh, at uh, Yankee Stadium, going from a you know hitter's worst nightmare at Dodger Stadium to a hitter's uh, you know dream at Yankee Stadium. I predict him to sign with the Yankees for 11 years, 330 million dollars. Uh, I think he's going to get a huge payday. So Corey Seager to the New York Yankees. Third on this list is Freddie Freeman, uh, Atlanta Braves legend, who ended 2021 World Series champion, 2020 National League Most Valuable Player. Uh, he definitely has had a very excellent career, uh, especially now with the World Series ring to add to his already impressive resume. Uh, you know, he's just a you know left-handed power bat, just a threat, uh, and uh, he's on the free agent market. Uh, the Red Sox rumored to be on on him. I think he makes some sense for them. Uh, the Red Sox still looking to contend next season, and the Yankees, right? The Yankees are you know definitely be interested after losing Anthony Rizzo in free agency. If you think he would fit the Yankees, but ultimately think he ends back up with the Atlanta Braves. It just sounds like a fit. Uh, and I just think the Braves, you know, Braves is where he calls home. I think they're going to do whatever they can to make him a lifelong Brave, even that they have to overpay. And I think they're going to give him six years, 180. And he's the, he's the core of that team. He is the heart and soul of the Atlanta Braves. I can't see Freddie Freeman leaving the Atlanta Braves. I mean, I understand he turned down that contract offer, uh, but I just don't see him leaving the Atlanta Braves. Number four on this list is third baseman Chris Bryant, 2016 most, and a most valuable player, 2016 World Series champion, 2015 NL Rookie of the Year. Uh, this guy definitely had a very impressive first couple of seasons in the bigs, and recently it's just been kind of eh. Eh, not, not great. Uh, you know, a significant downturn, I'm going to say, you know, after the 2017 season. I mean, he's a good player, but he's not anything spectacular. Uh, you know, was a uh, rental for the uh, San Francisco Giants. Of course, he won't be considered a rental if they can re-sign him. Uh, but, uh, you know, it gets traded over from the Cubs after, you know, they just totally blew it up. Uh, but uh, some teams were, you know, I think that he could fit. Definitely the Mets, right? And he could decide over at third base. I don't think he'll go to the Mets, uh, but I definitely think he makes a lot of sense for the Mets. Uh, you know, especially with Steve Cohen, he's still got to spend that, that crazy money that he so-called got. He still fits the Cubs, and he's still young enough, the center of the Cubs' new core. You know what I'm saying? The younger core they're trying to build. I believe they have a long way to go, but I still think he thinks fits the Cubs. I, I think it'll be interesting if he went back there, and the Cubs definitely have some money after dumping so much payroll. And the Giants, right? I mean, a team that, uh, you know, he spent the second half of the 2021 season with. And I uh, definitely would love to bring him back. It makes a lot of sense. But ultimately, I think he ends up with the Seattle Mariners. Uh, for seven years, $175 million. I think that's most he's going to get. And it's funny because he con it turned down a contact extension for the when he's with the Cubs for, I think it was 200 plus. Uh, so uh, it's a huge risk. There you go, right? I mean, if he would have accepted that, that would have been great. But instead, now you, you take the risk of going on an open market and actually get less money. And that's what's probably going to happen with Chris Bryant. Uh, so I just don't see him getting uh, above 200 mil, or you know, I see him getting like 180 tops. I don't see him getting anything above 180. Of course, you got Scott Boris as the agent. Seattle Mariners make a lot of sense. Another young team, another you know, young core. Just fell short of the playoffs this past year, you know, in a heartbreaking fashion. You got former Phil J. B. Crawford in tears. Uh, so the Mariners, I mean, I, I, but honestly, Chris Bryant isn't some superstar, right? The 20, he's not giving you 2016 numbers anymore, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, he could. Uh, he's been a very inconsistent, injury prone player over the past couple years. And I'm just not a big fan of his playing ability, but I do think he will end up with the Seattle Mariners. Number five on this list, Marcus Simeon, uh, who had an MVP season with the Toronto Blue Jays this past year, was an MVP finalist along with his teammate, uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And, of course, he did lose to Los Angeles Angels' Shohei Otani. Uh, and uh, he definitely would still fit the Toronto Blue Jays. Are they willing to you know, break out the big box? We'll see. But I think their biggest priority is retaining AL Cy Young Award winner Robbie Ray. And that's why I do not think that Marcus Simeon, in my opinion, I don't think he's going to go back to the Blue Jays. The Yankees still make sense, right? They're in on Corey Seager. Uh, so I definitely could see him going to New York Yankees. Uh, I think that would make a lot of sense. And the Tigers. I definitely think he fits the Tigers. The Tigers have a lot of money to spend, too. Uh, but ultimately, I think he ends up with the Los Angeles Dodgers for five years, $140 million. He's familiar with the West Coast after playing in Oakland uh, all his career prior to signing that one-year deal with the Toronto Blue Jays. And the Dodgers are going to need a shortstop. I mean, especially when they win, pretty much, you know, inevitably when Seager does sign elsewhere, they're going to need a shortstop. And I think that, uh, you know, Marcus Simeon would be the perfect fit for the Dodgers. I think he'd make a lot of sense. And I see him ending up with the Los Angeles Dodgers. He's familiar with the West Coast, like I said. Of course, you know, he was in the AL and he was in the A's, but now he's going to be in the NL. Uh, you know, be going against his former manager, Bob Melvin of the Padres. As we go to number six on this list, 
Kevin Gosman, uh, you know, with the San Francisco Giants this past year, who had himself a very, very, you know, solid season. Was not one of the uh, Scion finalists, but boy, I mean, he had a year, remember, no question about that. Big reason as to why the uh, Giants went as far as they did. Uh, you know, of course, they were first round exit, but I mean, the way they got there, just simply amazing. Uh, see the Yankees in on him. I mean, the Yankees still need starting pitching very, very badly. Uh, the Mets. Also, still need starting pitching, especially at the loss of Noah Syndergaard. They pretty much lost that to the 2019 season, pretty much. And the Phillies, I, I think the Phillies could, you know, definitely, you know, look at this guy. Uh, there's no question about that. I still don't think they're real content with their rotation, and I, I don't. I, I think my Phillies maybe can make a play for him. I, I seriously doubt that. I think the Mets and Yankees would be more likely. Ultimately, I think he ends back up with the San Francisco Giants. There's good chemistry there. He's comfortable there. I think the Giants would be more and more willing to, you know, bring him back than they would say Chris Bryant over at third base. I uh, see that for five years, one hundred and thirty million dollars. And the Giants need him. Yeah, yeah, Gabe Kapper and the Giants need him. And number seven on this list, Robbie Ray, the reigning AL Cy Young Award winner, coming off the books with the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, he just had a, a year to remember, uh, just a, a fantastic year. I definitely think the Yankees would be looking to him. Uh, as I said before, previously with Kevin Guzman, uh, they need another starting pitcher in this rotation to, to go along with Derek Cole. Uh, they need that little one-two punch the Phillies had in 2020 with Zach Wheeler and Aaron Of course, Aaron was a, a was a classical disappointment here in 2021. I definitely think the Mets also would be looking at Robbie Ray. I do not think he ends up with New York and the Dodgers, too. And you know, Clayton Kershaw, you know, possibly leaving, probably going to a team like the Rangers. Uh, with Trevor Bauer probably not being back for a while, I definitely think the Dodgers would be looking at him, especially if they don't bring back Seager. But ultimately, I think he ends back up at the Toronto Blue Jays. Have to keep him, even though they didn't make the playoffs. They still won nine, over ninety games, uh, and he was a big reason as to why they did that. Five years, one hundred twenty-five million dollars. It's twenty-five mil a year. Uh, so I think that may make a lot of sense for Robbie Ray. Number eight on this list, Trevor Story. Uh, had, a, had a decent season. I'll say a decent season with the Colorado Rockies. and But he had a decent season at Coors Field. I mean, like, even at Coors Field, he just was all right. I mean, I think he's a tad overrated. I think, you know, the price tag that he is so-called worth is not really what he's worth. Uh, I definitely think he's going to get massively overpaid this offseason. I definitely think the Phillies will look into him, uh, but I did not put them in the top three. I definitely think the Tigers will be looking at him. Of course, they're looking at Carlos Correa. Why not again going to look at uh, Trevor Story? Uh, the Mets also are going to be looking at him. The Astros, and the Astros are interesting. And the simple fact is because of the fact that they're, they're, they're most likely uh, not only going to, they're not going to bring back Carlos Correa. Uh, and uh, Trevor Story would be significantly cheaper uh, then Carlos Correa, and I do think that he could fit the Astros. There's no question about it. They're going to have a huge vacancy at shortstop. Uh, so Trevor Story to the Astros could work. Well, to me, I see him signing with the Texas Rangers uh, for six years, $130 million. I think he fits them. I mean, the Rangers, uh, like the Tigers, like the Mariners. I mean, I don't even going to say like the Tigers and Mariners. I think the Rangers are definitely further back. Uh, but, I mean, they're, they're a young team. They're, they're trying to get younger. They're trying to build a new young core. Why not sign Trevor Story uh, to build around it? As I said before, I do think he's overrated. Number nine on this list is Max Scherzer. You know, a 37-year-old who finished third in Cy Young Award voting this past year uh, with the uh, Washington Nationals and Los Angeles Dodgers World Series champion in 2019. He's a member of the Washington Nationals. So three Cy Youngs, one World Series ring. Uh, this guy has had an amazing career, a Hall of Famer, no doubt. Uh, and he's still pitching like an ace. You know, some teams are going to be in on him. The Nationals. I mean, maybe he gets a little nostalgia. Maybe he takes a discount to go back to the, the to Washington Nationals. Uh, maybe he looks to maybe you know, want to go back to. I don't really see that happening. The Yankees. They need more starting pitching. I think Max Scherzer would love the pitch with the Yankees, uh, but uh, he's going to be pitching at a little sandbox. And I don't think he's really going to like that. Uh, I don't see him going to the Division of New York Mets. I did put them in on this, but. Uh, I do think that he'd be more in their price range. But he's going to be very, very expensive. Don't get me wrong. He's going to be assigned a very you know, you know, short-term deal. Uh, but I definitely think the Mets would definitely be looking at this guy. I mean, would just love to have them, especially when they play the Washington Nationals. They would just love that. So, you know, it sounds like a typical Met thing to do, right? But ultimately, I see him signing back with the Los Angeles Dodgers on three years, $100 million. Yes, three years, $100 million. I mean, that's the kind of year he had. Uh, that's the kind of year he had. I mean, and, and honestly, he kind of had an all right 2020 season, the 60-game season. Uh, so I definitely see him signing back with the LA Dodgers uh, for that amount. And number 10 on this list, Nicholas Castellanos, uh, who opted out of his contract with the uh, Cincinnati Reds. Uh, some teams in on him, the Texas Rangers. Uh, as I said with Trevor Story, 
They need a, a you know bat to build around with their you know younger quarter trying to get. And Nicholas Castellanos will be that kind of guy to do that. San Diego Padres they fell short in 2021. Uh, they need another big bat in that lineup to go along with you know Manny Machado, Fernando Tatis Jr., uh, Eric Hosmer when he's on I guess. Uh, so I definitely think he makes some sense for the Padres and the LA Angels. Uh, they need some outfield help with you know around you know Mike Chatty. You got Anthony Rendon on that team, and people are giving up on my man Tony. People are giving up on my man Tony. He's gonna bounce back in 2022. People are like, oh, he had a really down here, which he did. But people are just giving up on the guy. He was the number one, number one going into 2021 third baseman, and now all of a sudden everybody's gonna up on him. I just wanted to make sure I I said that. Uh, you know, going along with Mike Trout and Shohei Otani, I, I think that he, you know, definitely would fit the Angels. But the Angels need, to, in my opinion, focus on pitching. And uh, of course, they did ink Syndergaard of that one-year deal. Ultimately, I think he ends up the Chicago White Sox. Five years, one hundred twenty-five million dollars, so twenty-five million a year. Uh, the White Sox and their team that did fall short. I definitely think they need another outfielder. I think he made a lot of sense for the Chicago White Sox. He just seems like a White Sox. I don't know. I just, of course, he did play in the North Side of Chicago when he was with the Cubs in two thousand nineteen. And then, of course, he liked the free agency and then signed that deal with the Reds. So my prediction, Nicholas Castellanos to the Chicago White Sox, five years, $125 million. Some other names I'll just throw in there, I guess. Javier Baez. Uh, I see him going to Washington. He makes a lot of sense for the Washington Nationals, of course, after they traded away Trey Turner. Uh, and the Nationals really aren't that far away. Let me just say that. I mean, they're far. They're not really that far. I mean, they have Neil Lane Thomas, Hernandez, they still have Soto's. Is he in his prime? I mean, of course, he's putting up elite, legendary Hall of Fame numbers. But, I mean, maybe he can even get better than he is right now. So that's why I'm kind of holding back. They got Ruiz, that kid behind him, play Carter Keevan, who they're hoping is going to work out. They got Josh Bell to switch hooter at first. Uh, they got Victor Robles, who they're still hoping can blossom, uh, which I don't really have much hope for that. And, of course, they got, you know, Joshua Gray. I mean, they got a very young team. They got a very young team. They got a, you know, a guy that could really just top out a lot of Vio Wander Suero in that bullpen. I could see them, you know, bringing over Javier Baez. And I still think he'd be young enough uh, to be on the Nationals and be productive. And when this rebuild for Mike Rizzo, which even President of the Nats and the Learner family, is complete. And also Starling Marte, and I don't even want to put it here. I see him signing with the Phils. The Phils are in dire need of a center fielder. Especially after they just, uh, you know, just pretty much just let Herrera walk, uh, which I thought was a very, very smart to say. He's not a legit center, center fielder. Starling Marte is a legit center fielder. He has speed, uh, and I really, really like his defense. Uh, so I think he'd make a lot of sense for the Phils. I did leave out some names. I can't be sitting here talking for 40 minutes. I am on a time limit. So you guys, thank you for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed. Do you agree with my predictions? Do you disagree with my predictions? Let me know. I'll see you all tomorrow for the weekly update. As I said before, I hope you all enjoyed your Thanksgiving. So guys, thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe if you have not yet. Please hit the notification bell. Please like this video. Comment on this video. Share this video. Check out the social media. Link in the description section. At Philly Hotstove Media, Instagram, TikTok, Arhorvenance Instagram. Uh, follow me on Twitter at P Hotstove Media. Call or text 267-225-3292. Email me. Philly Hotstove Media at gmail.com. I'll see you all tomorrow for the weekly updates. So you guys, thanks for watching. I'm Luke, and I'll talk to you later. I'll see you guys.